You're listening to a podcast appearing on the Two Guys Talking Podcast Network. This is the Weekly Firecast, Episode 11, Interview with the Hot Saucers Company. Strap yourselves in. It's time for the Weekly Firecast. This is the podcast for all foodies. Those who love food that is cooked over a fire or feels like fire in your mouth. If you love spice, smoke, sauce, and all things savory, this is the show for you. And now, here's your host, chili head and barbecuer, Scott Roberts. Welcome, everybody, to episode 11 of the Weekly Firecast. My name is Scott Roberts. I'm your host for the festivities. And I designed this show for people just like me. So if you find yourself being a chili head, a fan of fiery foods, a barbecuer, a heat freak, a flavor saver, I'm sure you'll find something special just for you. And this time out, I have an interview with a couple of guys. They started a company called Hot Saucers, based out in California. And they produce a product called Pineapple Express. It's a very runny, liquidy hot sauce. Uh, in my opinion, it works really great as a marinade just because of the consistency. It has a very unique fruity pineapple flavor, a little bit of kick from the spiciness. So anyway, um, here in just a few minutes in the episode, I am going to talk with them, see how they develop this and what other plans they have in the future. And for the review of the week this time out, I'm going to cover some of my favorite buffalo wing sauces. So if you want to know what I think is the creme de la creme, the very best things to put on your fried or grilled chicken wings. If you want to get some ideas, be sure to jot the names down that I mention and visit their websites. It will be well worth it. And just a couple of housekeeping notes. I want to encourage everyone to continue giving me feedback on the Firecast, whether it be good or bad. I want to hear from everybody. If there's something you would like improved on the show, if there is a subject matter or a guest you would like to hear from, let me know. Simply go to the number 2guystalking.com slash Firecast. Find the contact form on the left-hand side of the page, fill it out, and submit it. I read every single piece of feedback, every email sent to me, and believe me, I take all of them into consideration. There's not one I just kind of toss and throw away. Also, for those of you who just might know me from this podcast, I also have a popular Fiery Foods blog at scottrobertsweb.com. I've been running that for about five years. There are hundreds of product reviews on there. I talk about hot sauces, the Fiery Foods industry, you name it. So you can just go to scottrobertsweb.com or click the link in the show notes and browse around a little bit. I'm sure there's something that you'll like. I'd also like to invite you to like my Facebook page at facebook.com slash scottrobertsweb. Not only do I give updates on what I publish on my blog, and not only do I let you know when a new podcast episode is out, but if there's an interesting item I happen to spot on the internet and the news, whether it pertains to hot sauce or chili peppers or barbecue, I'll post it on there. So there's lots of good material for you to like. Again, that's facebook.com slash scottrobertsweb. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get to the show segments for the week. And now, the review of the week. All right, just as I mentioned several seconds ago, my review of the week is actually going to be my favorite wing sauces of all time. And like many of you out there, I'm a complete wing fanatic. It's something I could eat easily once a week and not get tired of it. I'm a fan of the sports bar type wings. I love making them at home, both frying them and grilling them. They all have their advantages and disadvantages, particular flavors and styles. Uh, just right off the bat, I'm not a fan of the breaded hot wings. I prefer the buffalo style, which is unbreaded. So it's within this context that I bring up my favorite hot wing sauces. Now, I also want to mention that I am a fan of many different types of flavors when it comes to wing sauces. Of course, my favorite is going to be the cayenne style, the buffalo style, the one that was originally created at the Anchor Bar in Buffalo, New York, which, as you all know, uh, back in 1964 was created from a mixture of Frank's Red Hot and melted butter. And as the famous story goes, uh, they had some extra chicken pieces, which happened to be the wings. They happened to fry them up, tossed them in the mixture of this, and the buffalo wing was born 48 years ago. So most of them that I'm going to mention on this list are going to be the buffalo style, even though I do like many different types of flavors. Now, what I'm going to do is go through heat levels and talk about my favorites of each kind. I'm going to start off with mild. And of course, my favorite is Ott's Wing Sauce, the original Ott's Buffalo Wing Sauce. If you've read my blog in the past five years, you probably know I am a huge, uh, ginormous fan of this sauce. 
of course, my search and my discovery of the sauce started back in the 1990s. My wife, well, now my ex-wife, she and I went on a mission to find the best hot wings in the St. Louis area. Of course, we would try other things, you know, general buffalo chicken strips. I was a big fan of that as well. And we had stumbled across a really good, creamy, tangy, a thick orange sauce served in, of all places, Denny's. We found out that the local St. Louis area Denny's used Ott's Wing Sauce, which is made here in the state of Missouri, just a few hours southwest of general St. Louis area where I'm located. So we were able to find Ott's Wing Sauce on the grocery store shelves, and it's been a staple of my house ever since. Now, this is a mild sauce, but it's a very thick, rich, creamy sauce, almost like a uh, thick Italian dressing would be. As a matter of fact, Ott's mainly makes salad dressings. So it has that type of consistency, flows very thickly out of a bottle, but it coats the wings beautifully. Nice and thick on there, you eat it, and it's absolutely addictive. You can find that at different places throughout the Midwest or just anywhere in the country. Simply go to ottfoods.com. That link will be in the show notes. I also want to give an honorable mention in the mild category to DEFCON Sauces Defense Condition 3. Now I'm going to talk about several other DEFCON Sauces here in a minute, but John Dilley, the owner of DEFCON Sauces, has in his main sauce line three different sauces called Defense Condition 3, 2, 1, and as the number gets lower, the heat intensifies. But number three is his mild sauce, and this is not a watery sauce. I would consider this to be medium consistency, but it has a nice, rich cayenne flavor and one of john dilly's secrets is well not really secrets in the ingredients list is that he uses heavy cream to give his defcon sauces a very distinctive flavor profile now defense condition three is not his best sauce but it's very similar to the other ones i'm going to mention here in a minute next up is my favorite medium heat level sauces and number one in this category would be defcon sauces defense condition two now it has all the rich incredibly potent cayenne flavor of defense condition three but it has a little kick of heat to it and that's enough to push it over the edge to make it a spectacular five star wing sauce if you're a true wing aficionado you owe it to yourself to go to DefconSauces.com and get a bottle of this. It is a great happy medium that would appeal to people who really can't take gigantic amounts of heat, but it still pleases the hardcore chili heads out there because it just has enough heat. So all you have to do is cook up 10, 12 of these wings, whatever your favorite method is, frying or grilling, coat them, toss them in the sauce, and you will be in wing heaven. Spectacular stuff. And there's a few honorable mentions I would like to bring up as well. One is Rippin' Red Sauce. Now, John Rosati, the owner of Rippin' Red Sauces, has both an original and hot version of the sauce. There's not a whole lot of difference in the heat level. One I would kind of classify as, I guess, somewhere in between hovering and that little sweet spot between mild and medium. The hot version kind of straddles that line between medium and hot. Anyway, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to lump them together in this medium category. Both are very good, very creamy, very rich, and wing fanatics would be pleased. Another honorable mention is Honey Blaze Wing Sauces. Now, as you probably guess, I love really rich, creamy, pop-in-your-mouth kind of flavors of sauces. This is very similar in a lot of ways to Rip and Red and Defcon Sauces. But as the name implies, Honey Blaze adds a touch of honey flavor to it. So there is that little bit of sweetness. And unlike a lot of uh, hot sauces that contain honey... The honey does not overpower the flavor, but of course it adds that distinctive sweetness, that kind of uh, indescribable sugariness that can only come from honey. It can't be really duplicated by sugar or high fructose corn syrup or some artificial sweetener. But it's really great stuff if you're in the mood for a typical buffalo sauce with some nice sweetness to it. And now we go to the hot category. And my favorite sauce may surprise you a little bit. Buffalo Wild Wings gets a bad rap from a lot of people, and the the people I'm referring to are usually the hardcore chili heads. They think that they're just kind of a plain, generic chain restaurant. They have some pretty good sauces in their lineup. Not all are great, but the one I would have to classify as my all-time favorite hot-level wing sauce would be their Mango Habanero. This is totally off the beaten path. It's not a buffalo-style wing sauce, but it's almost like a thick fruity, sweet, almost honey-like glaze that's both good on wings and boneless buffalo wings, or as I make a lot for my boys, chicken strips. Now, as the name implies, it has some kick from habanero, and for a chain restaurant, they actually do employ a lot of the habanero heat. 
So if you eat one wing, it won't blow the doors off your mouth, so to speak, with its intense heat. But try about 10 wings. You'll see that there is a nice residual heat that builds up. And I love it. And the sweetness, it's not fruity like a lot of the mango habanero sauces out there. But it kind of has a general sweet flavor. It's just kind of hard to pinpoint exactly what gives it that little extra zing. Honorable mentions? Oh, guess what? There's another DEF CON sauce. This one would be Defense Condition 1. Now, it's another step up from heat from my favorite in the medium category, Defense Condition 2. Defense Condition 1 has the same basic taste, but I believe there's a bit more of the cayenne content that kind of kicks things up, and it has a little bit of chili pepper extract in it. Now, this is a sauce for an extract sauce that actually tastes really good. But after about five, six, seven of these wings that you would eat, you can detect very faintly in the background a little of that extract flavor, which is why this is not a five-star sauce, in my opinion. I probably would knock it down a half a point to four and a half stars, but still a very recommendable product. And if the Defense Condition 2 from DEF CON isn't hot enough for you, try this. It provides plenty of burn. And lastly, I wanted to mention in the hot category, K. John's Wing Sauce 10. Now, this was originally part of K. John's 10 sauce line, which marked, of course, 10 years of them being in the business. I think these were produced in 2007, and they used the heat of the Buccilokia pepper. And back then, ghost peppers were all the rage. It was just certified by Guinness as the hottest pepper in the world. And Cajun did an outstanding job of providing a good wing sauce that had that Jalokia flavor. Now, I think it's not part of the regular lineup anymore, but he does make the sauce periodically. So if you get a hold of Cajun, uh, email him through his website, kjohns.com, and he might be able to see if he has uh, some on stock and may be able to do a special order for you. And then last but not least, there is the extreme sauce category, ones that are extremely hot. Now, most of the sauces out there in this category are extract laden or they're just so hot or just contain so much of that bitter Trinidad Scorpion, even Buccilokia flavor that I really can't recommend it as something that you would eat a lot of. Of course, the things with this heat level, you really can't. This is the stuff for wing contests. But there is one wing sauce that is head and shoulders above the rest of the flock when it comes to extreme heat. And it has the big distinction of being my favorite wing sauce of all time. This one would be Dufcon Sauce's Cluck Wing Orange Deathmatch Sauce. Now, Dufcon Deathmatches are Dufcon's foray into burning people through the wing contest. They are designed to be nothing but hot. But John Dilly of Defcon Sauces, uh, he spent a lot of time in development to create a sauce that not only was blazingly hot, but spectacularly delicious as well. And guess what? He completely succeeded with Flying Colors. This is an incredible product. It is absolutely stellar. He completely trumps everything he did with the Defense Condition lineup. And that is quite an achievement in and of itself. Now, the consistency of this is a little thicker, a little creamier than the Defense Condition lineup. I think it's probably closer to my favorite mild sauce, Ots, in that aspect. But it's so rich, so flavorful. And this one does have the heat of Trinidad Scorpion Peppers in it. And it also has some heat of extract. But amazingly enough, neither the bitter, floral, kind of flowery taste of Trinidad Scorpion Peppers nor the horrible, nasty chemical flavor of chili pepper extract bring this down one iota. It is unequivocally, no doubt about it, a five-star product. The only bad thing is you can't eat a lot of it. So if you're the kind of dude who loves to eat 10, 12 chicken wings at a time, you might run into a few problems finishing these. But if you're ever in a situation where you whip up a batch of chicken wings, you try a couple different wing sauce flavors, have this at the ready. And it is just a beautifully delicious product. I can't rave enough about it. Good stuff. So if you're interested in any of these wing sauces, I will put the links in the show notes. And the show notes can be found at one of two places, at the official Weekly Firecast website at weeklyfirecast.com. Just look for the show notes for episode 11, or you can go to the podcast site at the numeral 2, guystalking.com forward slash firecast. And just look for the notes for episode 11, and you'll find them all there. So get yourself a bottle of each of these, get a roll of paper towels ready, and you'll be in Buffalo Wing Nirvana. I guarantee it. We'll be back after these messages, so stick around. Poker's been around a long time. 
The memories, the cards, the money, the players, it all makes for an outstanding experience. But where can you get true knowledge, tips, tricks, and detail? Don't miss the next episode of Two Guys Talking Poker, where poker zealots Vic Porcelli and Andy Kazin interview poker greats like Michael the Grinder Mizraki, Alan Chainsaw Kessler, Greg Fossilman Raymer, and many more. Add on superb hand analysis and poker industry news, and you've got the Two Guys Talking Poker podcast. Check it out now at twoguystalkingpoker.com. That's twoguystalkingpoker.com. Do you consider yourself to be a chili head and want to find some hot new gear to wear? Oh, yeah. Look no further than chiliheadcheese.com. If you're a heat freak and love hot sauce, chili peppers, or anything dealing with fiery and spicy foods, this is the place to get t-shirts to show off your obsession. Chili Head Cheese is dedicated to giving you the hottest t-shirts, mouth pads, mug, aprons, and more for the discriminating chili head. Go to chiliheadcheese.com. That's C-H-I-L-E-H-E-A-D-S-T-E-E-S.com. You're listening to a podcast appearing on the Two Guys Talking Podcast Network. Having a friendly, relatable voice can mean all the difference in your marketing efforts. Let Scott Roberts' voiceover be that voice. I can give you the goods, whatever your need is, whether it be for commercials, podcasts, voicemail phone systems and on-hold messages, business presentations, websites, audiobooks, and more. If you require a personable, real, down-to-earth voiceover artist, then look no further. You can find out more at scottrobertsvoice.com. I'm Bob Chrisman from the Galaxy Cast, reviewing each and every episode of The Clone Wars, Sci Fi Entertainment, and more on the Two Guys Talking Podcast Network. And now, the Fire Talkers interview. And now, here is my interview with Josh and James of Hot Saucers. I'm here tonight talking with James Sunderland and Josh Todd of Hot Saucers. How are you guys doing? Awesome, yeah, doing real good. Awesome. Anyway, uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves just so people can identify the names with the voices. Yeah, well, my name is James Sunderland, and uh, we just kind of started Hot Saucers a couple years ago. I'll, I'll do more of the you know social media, that sort of marketing, and it's, it's a good partnership here with Josh, and he does more of the distribution. So, And I'm Josh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's good to talk to you both. Why don't you go ahead and give us a little background on your company? Definitely. Well, um, it's kind of a funny story, like all, I guess all, I don't know, not all sauces, but kind of quirky sauces like ours. Um, we kind of fell into it. Uh, I was working at a bar, and James just, uh, just, uh, just came in every once in a while. We'd always talk about, you know, cool things going on in the area. And um, I was giving guitar lessons to this, uh, this pretty well-known chef in the area, um, very well-known chef in the area. And uh, you know, I never charged him because I knew he was. It was just really cool being around him. So uh, one day, he's his wife came up to me and said, "Hey, uh, you know, you've been giving um, my husband lessons for a while, and I really appreciate it. What, what do you want?" I was like, "I said nothing." Until uh, James had this great idea about doing originally doing a barbecue sauce, and uh, I approached him saying, "Hey, you know, uh, would you be um, willing to help us fabricate a, a sauce?" He was not very receptive to it. A because he worked for a he was contracted through a larger company. Um, I guess can we tell the company? I guess we can say the company. Sure. He work, He's just he works for Disney. And okay. Disney's guys, and he, he just felt like it'd be a conflict of interest or something. So, so he said he kind of blew me off. And then uh, next time I gave him a lesson on a Thursday, I showed up and there was a team of chefs there with an abundance of sauces to try out. And one of the sauces we tried was. Pineapple Express, um, and me and James fell in love with it right off the bat. We're like, wow, this is a great sauce. And we never- yeah, we, for us, it was something that was different. We knew right off the bat that um, we couldn't be the hottest hot sauce. There's so many amazing companies that have such a legacy of being in that realm. So we thought, you know, let's try something different. What can we do that um, could kind of work as uh, more accessible to a, a general public? Um, something that wasn't a red sauce. So that was kind of like the goal. That's kind of something we wanted to do, just really accessible, really exciting. And the fact that we had real chefs make it, not manufacturers, um, was kind of an advantage, but it gave us some uh, different perspectives. But then we went into manufacturing. We we, We kind of learned quickly that 
Um, that's not typically the way you do it. So it was neat to see. It's just neat to have the product that people now have is something that was really formulated in a kitchen in a house. It's the exact same recipe. I mean, you you buy stuff a little bit differently, but uh, more or less what was created. And we even have like a little video of kind of the first tastings that we did. It's still something that is in the bottle. So mm-hmm. that's kind of how the genesis of that started. So how long ago was this sauce developed? I'd say it was a little over two years ago now. It's yeah, in, it's been in the market for two years at least. Probably three years ago, it's been you know a lot of uh, a lot of research and development on the uh, you know we never know how to make a hot sauce right. or to try and manufacture hot sauce, and you find out that hot sauces explode if you don't do them right. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a there was, there was a big learning curve. I mean, originally we thought, hey, um, this is only going to cost you know a thousand dollars to do. Um, we'll just go buy some square bottles because square bottles are really cool. We'll do labels like this. And then we learned real fast that um, there's a certain method to it. And so we were already buying stuff and trying to just think we could just um, build it ourselves and then got kind of that learning curve experience, those those fun lessons where you go to the manufacturer and they say, you're nuts. There's no There's no possible way you can do that. Now, would you guys consider yourselves to be hot sauce fanatics or chili heads yourselves? I mean, w- would this be a product? Let, let's say you weren't in this business at all with this product. I mean, would this would this be something that you would buy yourselves? Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I use it all the time. Um, I would say that I am a chili head. I mean, I'm definitely within those circles. I'm not, you know, to me – I'm not biting into like a scorpion pepper, like right off the bat though. Like I have friends that um, also grow peppers and they'll bring them to me and we get really excited about making small batches. So Mm -hmm. I do, I have a huge hot sauce collection myself, but I mean, I have a lot of respect for the guys that have just, you know, all the, the Blair, um, you know, Halloween series. I mean, there's just, we both know that there's big levels of hot sauce fanatics. Um, so I'm kind of – I'm maybe a little bit more than the entry. Like I know a little bit more about peppers than the average Joe, but um, to be a chili head fanatic, um, I'm more in the, the cooking realm of it. So I like applying um, hot sauces and marinades and glazes and brines and kind of getting funky with it in that sense. Good thing you kind of mentioned that, and I guess we can kind of segue into talking about the hot sauce itself. It is pineapple-based. I mean, there are a lot of pineapple sauces out there, but it's not really common mm-hmm. when you talk about the whole fiery foods industry as a whole. I mean, when you think of that, pineapple, I guess, is still an uncommon ingredient. I personally love the flavor. Uh, to me, it, it's the texture is very runny. I would probably prefer it to be a little thicker, mm-hmm. but I do look at it as more of a cooking sauce or a marinade because of the, the runny consistency. Did you kind of want that or shoot for something like that? We did. Our first batch actually was very thick, and what yeah. happened is like when I first took it to market, we were in a lot of restaurants uh, in the area. We were in a, a good group of uh, restaurants, and the problem they were saying was that it was so thick it was having a hard time coming out of the bottle or it was making a big mess. And that was with adapters that we had on it for restaurants. And so all of our customers were asking for a thinner recipe. So we went for our next batch and we went thinner. And then uh, it, it was different. Um, and now when we, when we market it in a, a retail spot like a, like you know a grocery store, it has to, it's, sits in the shelves of, so, of marinades and dressings rather than on the shelf next to hot sauces. And, and, you know, and another thing, when we do our, our, our demos in farmer's markets, it's much, much easier to get people interested when and, um, we let them know that it's a um, spicy dressing or marinade, especially if we do like any type of um, marinade with beef jerky or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really opens people's minds because when they hear hot sauce for a demo, they are automatically think, oh, it's just going to make me uncomfortable for the rest of my, my shopping or the rest of my day. And they don't really see that it, the sweetness and the complexity that a lot of these um, new wave of sauces have. And so when we – depending on who it is, you know, some people you say hot sauce and they're all about it. And then, the, then there's the other crowd where it's just hot sauce and they're like, I'm not going to touch that. But then we're able to kind of coax them into it with a lot of the cooking methods and – um even the recipes where it's a drink additive. Yeah, yeah, I, and I was going to ask you about those here in a minute. But, yeah, I, I think it's a terrific marinade. I've tried it with chicken. I want to try it with some shrimp here soon. I mean, since, you know, I have a yeah. – uh, I'm a single dad of two boys. It's hard to cook, I guess, 
more than just run of the mill food for them. Yeah. So it, it's hard to experiment every single day with stuff. But yeah, it, it really worked. And the tartness and the sweetness from the, the pineapple really burst through. It's not too terribly hot in a spicy sense. Right. I mean, so, so I, I think you guys, if you're targeting that demographic of just the regular people out there, you're aiming just the right way with just enough spiciness for the general public. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think that's why uh, we've had a lot of success with certain um, food places that are a little bit more trendy, you know, like waffle places, crepe places, and it's just accessible. It, it works in a lot of different it doesn't blow people's heads off, but at the same time, it's a little fun and it's a little funky. So Exactly. Well, let's talk about some of the applications for this. Why don't you go ahead and, and kind of give a few recipe ideas for everyone listening to this? Well, definitely. What I like to do is um, cut it with some soy sauce, especially if I'm doing any kind of marinade. And to thicken it up, as you said, it is a little bit runny, but to thicken up for like a glaze, I add a little bit of honey and I add a little bit of ketchup. So I know some people, you know, they hear ketchup and barbecue and they're like, that's sacrilege. But um, that's something that just gives it a little bit more volume and makes the glaze kind of stick a little bit better once it's already on the barbecue. Uh, mm -hmm. My favorite and what we're trying to do more and more and more with restaurants, and it wasn't even our idea. A restaurant kind of told it um, to us was it's a Bloody Mary mix. So they'll, they'll add this as a Bloody Mary mix, and it gives you that sweet, savory, and that little kick component, but it's not just full of acidity that most tomato juice Bloody Marys have. Yeah, and personally, I'm not a huge fan of Bloody Marys when I, I guess I would say when I have to drink them. I prefer them a little on the, the sweeter side than, I guess, the tangier, more vegetable, tomato-y side. Yeah, I think savory is the key word there, too. It's when people you put the salt on it and a little bit of lime, that, they have that balance of acidity that, that um, really works together. But, yeah, for some people, it's just they're able to change it to their liking. And that's that's been kind of the cool thing with it is that we've had bars tell us what they're doing with it um, on their own. We walked into a bar last week that is a customer, not a big customer of ours, and I looked on the menu, and they have a drink called the Pineapple Express Margarita. Ah. <laughs> I asked the bartender, I said, what, what is this? And she goes, oh, we make it with this, uh, this hot sauce that's made here in town. And I go, oh, my God, that's our hot sauce. <laughs> so we'll do a video with them. That, that's going to be coming up. Um, but there's exciting stuff like that. Since it's so broad, the application of it and the flavors, I mean, doing farmer's markets, we've even heard of kids using it to put on their waffles. It's just really that is friendly. Awesome. It's really funky where it's just it's kind of like a like a gateway hot sauce. Um, people try Tapatio, they try Tabasco as, as far as really broad. Um, but when they try this on a, a restaurant table, they get a little bit um, more flavor out of it. Or it's just not a red sauce. You can't marinate a lot of foods within um, hot sauce directly. It's definitely a much different flavor profile than your Louisiana style hot sauces out there. Right. Have you guys thought about putting that in a like a different size bottle, a smaller bottle, maybe with like a flow restrictor to kind of prevent you know yeah. a lot of this from splashing all over the place? Originally, it was in a six ounce bottle with with um, I can't think of the name. Orifice reducer. Orifice reducer, uh, but that was when it was thicker. And this batch is obviously the runnier. So yeah, the next application will probably be a smaller bottle with that as an option, so it can have two different skews. And then we might go ahead and make the uh, original recipe back so we can have that as the thicker skew, so we can have three total skews when we're done. Right. That's, see, we're still figuring it out as we kind of go along, but feedback um, like yours and a lot of bloggers and just a lot of customers is just so valuable. Um, and so we're, we're, we're still trying to figure out what is the best uh, packaging, what is the best way to really have this product um, showcased and given out. And I think the larger bottle, it's currently a nine-ounce bottle. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, and, and I think that the size of the bottleneck, I mean, you get a lot out of it. So it's good for pouring large amounts if you want to get, you know, like a half a cup of this, whatever amount it is, you know. If you marinate some meat, you know, put it in a container or a baggie, however right. people marinate. It's good for that. Yeah, personally, I, I think if people would want to experiment just splash a little bit on food, it probably would need a smaller bottle and a, a smaller opening. Right, and maybe even something a little bit hotter down the pipeline. Um, but we, we wanted to make a core. We wanted to make something that just wasn't really out there, and we tried a lot of the pineapple ones, and they were still in that hot realm, um, that kind of the 
high vinegary, and so we wanted to make something that was just different. And once we tried it, it was just immediate. We tried about 20 different flavors. All of them were super good, but this one was just like, I don't think I've had this before. So um, we're trying to figure out how to best you know, showcase that. Yeah. Well, speaking of showcasing it, I love the the label, the packaging, your, your oh, whole uh, kind of look and feel. I mean, on one hand, you kind of like the uh, retros 50 feel. And then on another hand, you have, you know, like a pinup girl feel. And of course, who wouldn't want to feel a pinup girl? Uh, <laughs> and, and you also kind of have the Hawaiian beach feel. And it's just all Definitely. kind of rolled up into one. And just to me, the, the kind of label and packaging and what you have on your website is not your typical hot sauce. You know, flames everywhere. A lot of people think <laughs> hell and demonic or right, right. in your face type stuff. Yeah. I, I, again, we just we knew that it, that just that wasn't really us. I mean, uh, Josh, up until a couple of weeks ago, drove a what was it, sixty eight Cadillac. Yeah. Just just a boat of a cat. I mean. And for me, I've always loved that kind of um, nostalgic kind of branding, nostalgic kind of um, art that just kind of took you back that wasn't so totally in your face, heavy metal, rock and roll. Don't get me wrong. I love that. But if it was something that we were going to like live with and breathe with and have our branding kind of match that, uh, it was definitely going to have to have some kind of uh, old like 50s, 60s kind of pinup feel to it. Yeah. Well, I think it definitely fits the product well. You know, it's not a fire breathing in your face type sauce. It's more fruity, flavorful, tangy, just got a right amount of heat. So I, I think it suits it well. Have you guys thought about any other products? Anything else, you know, maybe debuting and within the next several months, several years? Well, I mean, have we thought about something? Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, have we tried some things? Yes. Yes, we have. Enough, uh, the, our problem is that this this product in particular has been very popular out here, and it's almost – it's kind of like – I mean, let me go back. I just think it's kind of hard to surpass. We need a product. If we're going to launch another product, right. it needs to be as good. We don't want to just launch, you know, a, a red sauce. Like we had a, an opportunity to do a chain, a red sauce for a chain out here, and we turned it down because, A, they didn't have the budget to do it right for how many stores they wanted to do for. Mm-hmm. We, we didn't want to, just, want to discredit the, uh, the brand. So we've toyed around with a lot of different flavors, and we have a couple in the pipeline. Yeah, I, when they de- debut, I'm not sure. Yeah, but we're looking to hit something that's just not not out there, and that's so hard because there's so many incredible uh, manufacturers from boutique to to more mass that are um, they're just making some great stuff. So we, we're looking for that that wow factor, and uh, we're just we're not quite happy with um, it. Although it's been some great, great, great prototypes. Um, nothing that just said, wow, if I give this to 100 people, 99 will love it. Exactly, and I think a lot of the newer sauce companies, I think they spread themselves too thin. They try to introduce too many new products all at once. Some end up being lackluster, yeah. and I, I think they should really focus on one or two really good key products, make sure that they're dynamite, and then kind of like the attitude and the, the approach that you guys are taking, You know, if it's something really good down the line, you know, introduce that. So a lot of newer sauce companies could take a lesson from you guys. Oh, well, we appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Well, I mean, I, I have a little bit of knowledge with the um, cigar industry. And from that one, I kind of took some notes, too, because for some companies, it's just a skew game. Every single year, they want to do 20 new facings, 20 new facings, 20 new facings. Uh, and the staying power for the ones that really focus on their core, something that's unique to the marketplace, something that has uh, to give it a chance to get a following just seems to do a little bit better. And when we were trying a whole bunch of prototypes, we got an email from uh, a location uh, that has our hot sauce. And it was just a crazy fanatic email of a guy saying he tried it, loved it, wanted to name his kid after it, and was drinking out of the bottle. So it was just <laughs> so over the top. It was so wacky. We're like, oh, my gosh. I mean, we really have – we should really focus our attention on this and see where it goes. If we just really give a lot of attention, try to get more people to try it, who knows what could happen with it? And we, we also take care of our fans. Like that guy got a bunch of free bottles. Anyone that responds to us positively, we just like to take care of our community too. And so when people come to our booth at a farmer's market or see us in the stores, that we like to interact with everybody so they know who we are and they know what we get behind our product. It's kind of a cool, very cool local feel out here with the sauce in the, these markets. Yeah. yeah. You'll encounter that. A lot of uh, companies and sauces in the whole hot sauce industry, I mean, they're really fanatic fans. 
and the sauce makers will respond accordingly and have a good relationship with their customers. So it, it just kind of falls in place with you know a lot of the stories I hear. So I think you guys are doing good with this. Where could people find you and buy your sauce? Um, I mean, uh, it's it's nationwide in the meat houses, um, in, in about half of them. They kind of come and go with them. Uh, locally here, I mean, it's pretty uh, it's pretty saturated here in Orange County. Uh, in the Orange any, any private market, definitely. Yeah, any private um, market in Orange County carries it. And definitely our website. Right now, we're the only distribution channel for our website. Uh, or, I mean, selling online. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're open to maybe working with some other people. Um, but right now, it's just basically our website for um, you know online sales. Other than that, we're in a, you know 60 to 75 different markets, restaurants, mainly within Orange County a little bit, in San Diego a little bit, in LA. Well, excellent. And your website is hotsaucers.com. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, any last minute things you want to uh, say to everybody out there? Um, no, just really appreciate the the interview here. It's been very cool. Been a fan of yours for a while and. Um, love interacting with all the other um, hot sauce, you know, fans, chili heads. So definitely don't be shy. Uh, we really want to interact with as many people in this this world, this culture of, of hot sauce and chili heads as possible. So definitely uh, to the listeners, don't be shy. Look us up on Facebook and Twitter, and uh, we look forward to just coming out with new stuff. Very good. And as always, for everyone listening out there, I'll put the links in the show notes. So anyway, uh, Gene, Josh, I thank you very much for talking with me tonight. Thanks, it's been Scott. a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Take care. All right. And thanks again for James and Josh for talking with me. You can get their product, Pineapple Express, at hotsaucers.com. Again, it's a very unique product, very watery in consistency. So it might not work in all the applications that you would normally use a hot sauce for. But my opinion works very well as a marinade or just to pour it over something. Now those guys were actually kind enough to send me uh, three YouTube links for recipe ideas to use with Pineapple Express. I will go ahead and put those links to those videos in the show notes in addition to the link to their website. Uh, give you a few ideas. Be sure to go to their website to get your own bottle of Pineapple Express. And of course for all the wing sauces I mentioned earlier... Those are available in the show notes as well. So anyway, that wraps up yet another episode of the Weekly Firecast. I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who's downloaded or subscribed to the podcast. If you love what you hear and you know of other chili heads, be sure to spread the word and tell them about this show. So anyway, until next time, remember, keep it burning. This has been the Weekly Firecast. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast via iTunes or at the official website at scottrobertsweb.com slash weeklyfirecast. The Weekly Firecast is part of the Two Guys Talking podcast network. For more information on other great Two Guys Talking programming, you can go to twoguystalking.com. That's the number two, guystalking.com. Thanks for listening. And remember, keep it burning.